In 2023, EVs faced everything. Crashing sales, not enough charge points, the weather, higher insurance costs, you name it. Now you know why GM and Toyota are shutting down electric car production and eyeing hybrids. The EV has been sacrificed at the altar of the climate agenda, taking the blame for society's woes. So will we see a course correction in 2024? Let's see. Americans are falling in love with hybrids. Since the EVs crashed, second-hand prices, there have not been enough charge points, there's been cold and hot weather, higher insurance costs, higher charging costs, higher parking costs, reliability issues, rain, winds, cats and dogs, etc. Why don't car companies want to make them instead of EVs? Electric vehicles are being overtaken by hybrids by a mile. In sharp contrast to global trends, not only the US, but even third world country customers prefer hybrid vehicles, which have a blend of combustion engines and electric motors, to pure play electric cars that are powered entirely by batteries or BEVs. They like to settle for an intermediate technology and familiarize themselves with alternative fuel before going all out for EVs. The humble hybrid is having a moment. While this year is shaping up to be the biggest year for EV sales, it has also been marred by staggering production challenges and uneven demand from consumers. Americans are still wary of electric vehicles' higher prices, limited battery ranges, and inadequate local charging infrastructure. As a result, some car makers are calling back their electric sales goals, battery plant plans, and even the tough love they once had for car dealers reluctant to go all in on EVs. Meanwhile, hybrid sales are growing at a rate that slightly outpaces EV growth, according to the U.S. Information Administration. Hybrids now make up nearly 10% of new car sales, a proportion that's more than doubled since 2020. Unlike EVs, high EVs burn gasoline and create tailpipe emissions, but they generally create far less tailpipe pollution than their purely gas counterparts. The latest Toyota Sienna minivan, for example, comes only in hybrid form and has nearly half the CO2 emissions of its non-hybrid predecessor. Given this surge in popularity, you might think that every car maker would be eager to offer more hybrids to customers who are looking to lower their carbon footprint but who feel unable to make the full leap to EVs, which you might call the hybrid dilemma. Faced with enormous costs pivoting their business, the auto industry can't decide whether hybrids are a bridge to an all-electric future or a dead end. At some point, Americans may still want hybrids while car makers have already moved beyond them. The problem car makers face is that hybrids involve all the complexities of internal combustion and battery power put together. Building them takes a lot of time and a lot of money. Sam Fiorani, the vice president of the industry research firm Auto Forecast Solutions said, but a lot of their money is focused on electrifying vehicles. Diverting some of that money back into hybrid powertrains slows your transition to where you ultimately want to be. In 2021, General Motors alone announced a $35 billion investment into electric and autonomous vehicle development, including new plants to make EV batteries. That's more than three times the profit it made in 2022. When you're staring down such monumental costs and the eventual death of internal combustion, why spend money to develop and build hybrids that still need gas engines when you can put all those resources into EVs instead? Car makers have varying levels of commitment to an all-electric future, yet there's somehow even less industry consensus about hybrid cars. Some hybrids work in much the same way as the original Toyota Prius from 20 years ago, combining a traditional gas engine with an electric motor. Others, like Trayman's Chrysler Pacifica, can plug in to charge just like an EV. Take Ford, which recently dialed back its EV on goals and is focusing more on hybrids. Ford is doubling the production of its hybrid model F-150, for example, which is proving to be more popular than its fully electric sibling. Then there's Stellantis, the parent company of brands including Jeep and Ram, which builds America's best-selling plug-in hybrid car while also offering some EVs. The high EV champion is still Toyota. It recently announced that the ubiquitous Camry sedan would soon be offered only as a hybrid as the company moves to basically hybridize its entire lineup of cars. But GM's CEO, Mary Barra, has said that the plan is to skip a half step and bypass hybrids entirely to go straight to EVs. Volkswagen has been similarly reticent on the hybrid front and is still debating whether to sell them again in America. After discontinuing one hybrid recently, Subaru is set to offer just one other option, the upcoming Forester Hybrid, but that won't even be on sale until 2025. Mazda's sole hybrid option is a large SUV that starts at nearly $50,000, nearly double the price of the cheapest new Toyota Prius. Even Honda, another pioneer in the hybrid space, is down to two hybrid models, though a third is coming soon. For now, more hybrids are coming soon to meet the new demand. That includes a broader lineup of hybrid Toyota SUVs as well as more novel cars like the 2025 Ram Charger, a hybrid with a V6 engine that is more like a full EV than every other gas-burning truck available right now. 
Perhaps more automakers will hop on the hybrid bandwagon until most, if not nearly all, gas-burning vehicles have some form of electric power. That would help cut emissions until EV charging networks are up to par. Or the rapidly falling cost of battery packs could soon make EVs comparable price-wise to, or cheaper than, gas cars. By that point, it wouldn't make much sense for automakers to continue investing in hybrids. Those are the most optimistic scenarios. The current status quo, a mix of different vehicle types for different needs, could persist and push us into a world in which hybrids don't do enough to mitigate our carbon problem. If car companies give up on hybrids before EVs become affordable and easier to charge, many consumers could simply opt for more gas vehicles, which isn't great for the climate. Or if automakers lean on hybrids for too long, they run the risk of delaying the EV transition entirely, which also isn't great for the climate. The electric transition may be inevitable, but it's going to be messier, weirder, and more protracted than many would like to admit. Hybrids have become favorites due to their reliability, affordability, and lower maintenance costs. Meanwhile, limited range, lack of charging infrastructure, and expensive insurance are concerns that the EV ecosystem needs to aggressively address to make its ride smoother. Hybrids may continue to play a crucial role as a stepping stone or as an intermediate technology towards a full EV adoption, helping to educate and familiarize consumers with alternative fuel technologies before they transition completely to electric mobility. Automobile majors in third world nations are also adopting various strategies for EVs. Tata Mahindra, the MG Motors G, have a long-term focus on EVs. Several electric players like the US-based Tesla, Fisker, and Vietnam-based Winfast are firming up their plans. VW planning to launch EVs in the next two to three years. Meanwhile, Maruti Suzuki, which is a leader in internal combustion and hybrid cars, and Toyota, which has launched hybrid models as an intermediate step, will eventually launch electric vehicles. Hyundai has over 1,100 functional charging stations and continues to grow this network. Many car manufacturers swear that EV is the technology of the future as it will help meet COP26 goals and go carbon neutral in the long term. However, not everyone in the automotive industry is convinced that EVs are the solution, or rather the only solution. Electricity generation in India is largely through thermal means, and hence EVs don't help further COP26 objectives. Also, there are functional transportation needs in a growing economy. EVs with their high cost of acquisition and lack of charging infrastructure have limits in addressing this requirement, says a senior official of a car company. Akio Toyota, chairman of Toyota Motor Corporation, recently said that the EV industry was coming to realize that there isn't a single answer to reducing carbon emissions. Toyota could be right. While the auto industry continues to pursue electrification, EVs will coexist with other technologies, such as ICE and plug-in hybrids. Regulatory nudges such as CAFE or corporate average fuel efficiency, which requires companies to lower greenhouse gas emissions and increase fuel efficiency, are pushing manufacturers to launch more models in different segments. It seems the future will be powered by many powertrains. So, the hybrids over EVs, which team are you? Team hybrid or EV? Comment your thoughts and share the video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more.